All right, everyone, the allergy load's a little bit less today, actually, thankfully. I've got the windows wide open because it's, you know, wonderful out. I like a rainy day. I like the noise of it. It actually helps me to focus and to sleep. Now, uh, we've got uh, basically nothing but politics today because in the last, like, 48 hours, it's just a constant mental breakdown. Since the immigration detention center thing, the situation has gone from not great to terrible to catastrophic for the entire Democratic Party to the point at which they're now, I think, preemptively worried about Jill Stein and the Green Movement and third parties and things like that because they're seeing their party schism. They're actually reacting the way that they would if they were intelligent enough to realize that was a risk. Their, their attacks on Jill Stein, which were obviously coordinated across multiple platforms, uh, obviously absolutely planned, uh, absolutely reactive, and absolutely indicative of the fact that they're absolutely fucking terrified right now. First and foremost, I mean, under any other circumstances, this would probably be the main video of the day. Instead, it's like sucking hind tit. The SCOTUS Janus decision, which was briefly, you know, the top trending. Uh, then we gotta talk about fucking Anthony Kennedy. We gotta talk about some new polling from the Democratic Party on 2020 candidates. I mean, uh, the, the Trump-Putin summit, basically, is, is an afterthought at this point. Nobody even is talking about it. The left is literally giving up an opportunity to rant about Russia right now. Keep that in mind. Uh, the SCOTUS decision, again, five to four, a split decision, uh, decides that public sector unions cannot force uh, members to pay dues. That, that's specifically, it violates the First Amendment because these groups engage in political activity. A union, like a teacher's union, they pull money, they get their dues, then they end up contributing to a political campaign. The left is livid about this because they're like, well, this erodes uh, the rights of workers, unions stand up for you. And it's not standing up for you. It, it, you have a right to make your own political decisions and donate your money to political campaigns. If you are being forced to be a member of a union, at the, which, by the way, in, in and of itself is problematic, if you have to be a member of one of these more or less involuntary unions, because states have structured it so that you have, you know, you're a teacher, so you are in the teachers' union. How the hell do they have any legal right whatsoever to force you to pay money when that money could, you literally, they could be forcing you to pay like a thousand dollars towards a political candidate who doesn't even like you? And by the way, it works both ways. What if a public sector union decided to endorse Republicans? Would the Democrats be uh, happy about the fact that they would be donating a bunch of money now? Union cash is just corporate cash. Unions are basically structured the same way a corporation is. It's a sub-corporation that represents people within that sort of corporate or uh, enterprising body. Unions, uh, they get glowing reviews from the left, but they're basically the same thing. In some cases, they can be really good. They're like, well, workers are being abused, so we're closing ranks, we're demanding a change, you know. We're, we're tired of getting salmonella for, in, from the shitty bathrooms. They're not cleaned properly because we don't have a gender. Something like that. And then you have situations, especially with regards to teachers. Here in Vermont, it's been a perennial problem where every few years, the teachers union puts on a general strike and shuts down multiple school systems within the state wanting more money. They hold the state over a barrel because obviously education is one of the most important things to happen. My answer to it is this, the state should pass a law allowing them to have it on reserve people who are qualified to teach and just stand in and say, fuck them. If they do that, if, if, if you're going to do that during the school year, you're impacting the children of the state, I would just fire you. I don't think that you should have any right to be protected from being fired if that's your idea. You're already making more than the median income in most cases. A lot of these teachers have been there 20, 30 years. They're making out like bandits. I'm sorry, but if they're living on the fringes of some little town in Vermont, their, their uh, cost of living is not inordinately high. It's not San Francisco, in other words. And just think, you know, I, I look at Rutland prices and I'm like, eh, too high. Uh, you look at like West Virginia or Wyoming or something a little bit lower. They just, you go down to Texas and you can buy a McMansion for the cost of a small, you know, you know fixer-upper here. I am not joking. A two-bedroom fixer-upper on a quarter acre here, you know, a, a starter home or something. You sell that for its fair market value. You go down there, you're getting five bedrooms, three bathrooms, you know, stone fireplaces, on an acre of prime real estate. It's not a joke, I mean, it's fucking nuts. And that's in one of the de <laughs> decently uh, quality of life areas of Southern Texas. I know, because I've you know, looked at real estate there. Uh, looking at the Janus decision though, I, I'm, I'm finding it funny 
that four justices could in some measurable way actually think that it should be considered constitutional for the government to force people working in various fields to give political donations by default. It absolutely astounds me that this wasn't a nine to zero decision. It really, by all means, it should have been because the answer is obvious. No, the government cannot compel you. You're saying that the government can compel you to pay money to a political campaign. Don't you think that's a conflict of interest? If they had voted in the other direction, it'd be a little bit like a miniaturized Citizens United, which, by the way, should be overturned. I say treat the unions the way you treat corporate donations, too. I, you know, having all this big money in politics is a terrible idea, preferably. I'll tell you how to fix a lot of the problems in this country. You want politicians that are accountable? You want politicians that actually have to campaign and care about the average American instead of just a few banks or whatever? All you have to do is restructure the campaign finance system, so here's the way it works. The top four candidates for a position get a small amount of public funding and a certain amount of airtime. They get debate access and everything. Top four from top four parties. You gotta include third party candidates so that Americans uh, stop living in football land fantasy dichotomy. And then you simply uh, have a one person, one donation capped at a certain level. And one business, one donation. No packs and super packs and shit like that. Private individuals can, uh, you know, do whatever they want, make a YouTube video about who they like for the position, but you can't canvas cable and newsprint and magazines and stuff by to the tune of millions simply because you don't coordinate with a campaign. I mean, it's a crazy idea. Shouldn't be corporations doing that. If average Americans or some, you know, ma and pa bookstore want to do it, it's a little bit different. Unions, same thing. You know, if you, if you took the corporate and union money out at the same time, neither the Republicans nor Democrats should care. Because they sort of cancel one another out now, wouldn't it? The unions tend to be heavily democratic, which is why the left is concerned about this. Because they're going to have less campaign donations coming from massive unions. That's just the way, because they're not going to be able to siphon off everyone's union dues. Because, you know, the average uh, teacher is not well served by the Democratic Party. The Democrats will go more pay for teachers. Yeah, but then you want to tax them more, so it's not going to, it's not going to help. Oh, you want to work less hours? Yeah, some of, them, some of you will get cut. That's what's going to happen. The Democrats... Uh, have not been a, a pro-worker party in a very long time. That's why union membership has been suffering. A lot of people are like, yeah, fuck it. The union has become little more than a fundraising apparatus for people who are 10 times richer anyway. You know, these people, I, I make 50K a year in the, in the salt mine. They're making 500K or, or 5 million a year, and I'm supposed to assume that they're going to represent me as a salt miner. That's not the way that the world works in any sane semblance of reality. That's about all. Peace out.